colors, am I right? That's the future, I guess Apple wants it to be at least. So essentially we're getting a lot of different rumors and reports and leaks suggesting that Apple is gonna revive the vibrant color palette they used to for the MacBook Air line. And I wanted to share with you my thoughts and doubts and hopes and dreams and dreams that were crushed in today's video. Let's begin. So most of the comments I originally got came from a lot of people responding to Max Tech's video about why the next generation MacBook Air would have white bezels. And he mainly talked a lot about how it's supposed to be a recognizable entry level model that when you first look at something like the 24 inch iMac, you know without a question that this is an up to date, more recent generation Mac that has Apple Silicon in it. Now, I find that a little bit backwards considering the M1 came out in three Macs last year, none of which got redesigned and from the outside view you would have literally no way of knowing whether or not you had an Intel MacBook Air or Mac Mini or if you had an M1 equipped MacBook Air or Mac Mini or MacBook Pro. Very difficult to tell to the average consumer but I guess because 24 inch iMac is meant to be catered towards the more average consumer that's why they wanted it to be very obvious with a chin and white bezels that hey this one's for fun, this one's not for pros, this one's just for everyday people so that's why we're living it up a bit and having more bright vibrant colors and that means that it's also coming to the MacBook Air, or at least it is to the source on front page tech that apparently was the same source that was saying the new iMacs would come in multiple different colors, which personally I had a very hard time believing because I didn't understand the point of having desktops with lots of colors, but obviously that's the direction Apple took it in, which is not one I was expecting, but it's most certainly how they're going back to that original quadrant of having more colorful options for the everyday consumer and more muted gray colors for for the pro desktop users. Ultimately, it really just feels like Apple was very personally offended by Justin Long's comments in those Intel ads. As soon as he said gray and gray, or Tim Cook was just like, oh. God, Justin, how badly do you want more colors? We'll give you all the colors now. But because of that, there have been lots of renders going around of updated MacBook designs with white bezels and white keys to give this fresh, more colorful look on the future of MacBooks. And I must say, as soon as I saw that updated MacBook Air design with the white bezels and the white keys, I was just like, man, I hate this so much. Apple has not had white keys on their MacBooks in many, many years. It's been, I believe, over 10 years now. Primary reason we stop doing that is because you touch your keyboard a lot with your fingers which are kind of dirty and that collects a lot of dirt which is why yeah in render form when it looks so clean and pristine in photographs it looks great to have white keys and white bezels and all that but in execution it usually ends up getting very very dirty and collecting oils and in my opinion this is very subjective it just looks cheaper I don't know something about having a white keyboard and white bezels to me makes it look more like a cheap Chromebook or, or something that's not very high-end or high quality even if it is built of high quality metal and that kind of thing it just looks like a downgrade in my opinion but I can honestly say there's lots of people that disagree with that I love how Apple found a way to just divide the entire Apple sheep community down the middle now we've got all these people who hate the white borders all these people who love the white borders and they want to take the rest of the market in that direction now we got to have white bezeled Apple watches and white bezeled iPhones with notches and that's just going to look horrendous isn't it but going back throughout history, I pretty much only bought Apple products that had black bezels because I couldn't stand the look of a white border. But now that they want the entry level models to have that kind of vibrant and obvious look of, hey, this is a new color and this is a entry level Mac. And it's so entry level that we want it to be obvious so that the, you know, webcam is more clearly a black cutout and there's a white border around the pixels and everything. Okay. You know, if you're part of that entry level market, you're, you're free to enjoy that. But if all things, it makes me very, very clear that I do not want an entry-level iMac and I do not want a MacBook Air myself. It makes me feel even more so as a pro, not because I need the performance, just simply because of the color options. And for the record, I have nothing against with the chassis and unibody of devices getting more color options, right? Like the iPad Air, I love the fact that it comes in lots of different colors and the fact that it retained the black border. That looks wonderful and I'm fine with that and I think there are plenty of ways for you to make more color options and still retain black best. 
bezels, and frankly, seeing some concept of a black bezeled MacBook Air that came in product red, that is my type of device. I'm a big fan of product red devices, and I don't like the white keys because they collect dirt a lot more easier. That's kind of the same way I'm against having a white interior in a vehicle, right? Because the stains and dirt becomes a lot more noticeable than in a darker interior. So if we could get a red MacBook Air with black bezels and a black keyboard, that I would get all over and I would love to see. And it's also partially the reason I've always wanted black AirPods, if possible. But Apple doesn't want to make those either. I'd take a black Apple Pencil if I could. I'd take a black AirTag if they sold it. All those things sound amazing, but it's nice to know that Apple just wants to go completely in the opposite direction, right? Because, yeah, white bezels, they're bringing that back. So we're gonna see it on the rest of the lineup now. But it's not completely free of downsides. I think it's safe to say that the next generation MacBook Air is probably a ways away. For one, there is a chip shortage that Apple directly mentioned during the earnings call saying that it's going to affect the iPad and Mac line quite a bit. And also the MacBook Air has never really been refreshed that annually. Sometimes they'll go a year and a half, sometimes they go two years without doing anything anything with the MacBook Air. And since we just got the M1 chip in it like last November, I wouldn't be shocked if Apple waits longer than a year to refresh it again because what's exactly the rush to getting an M2 chip or a next generation chip into a MacBook Air? It's already so dang powerful and it doesn't even have fans in it. Are there honestly a lot of people out there that bought the M1 MacBook Air and they were like, man, this thing is just so slow. So I don't think Apple's gonna rush to refresh this anytime soon. In fact, I think next generation MacBook Air isn't coming until next year and the performance gains over the M1 will probably be somewhat noticeable but given it's an entry-level product meant for everyday consumers not pros not people doing high intensive video editing or high intensive graphics performance because it's for the everyday consumer I don't understand the rush to getting a new chip in there right away knowing Apple and how versatile they are with the M1 put it in the iPad put it in the Mac mini put it in the MacBook Pro put it in the MacBook Air they love that M1 so much why would they be be so quick to phase it out and replace it with something else. If anything, I could see Apple keeping around the M1 for several years just being able to say, hey, it's still unbeatable. Hey, you still can't beat it. It still has amazing battery life. And because of that, what's the problem? You know, we're just going to keep it around a little bit longer. So there's absolutely time for Apple to change their mind on whether or not they want to bring more colors to the MacBook Air or debate how people react to the 24 inch iMac. I mean, personally, my hope here is that they see kind of the public response and, you know, they see major creators, people like MKBHD saying, wow, that thing is ugly and say, okay, we didn't really want to go this direction if it ended up dividing our whole fan base and making a lot of people upset. So in order to make people less upset, maybe we'll stick with black bezels because people didn't really seem to complain about them back when we did that. Now we have this growing number of people that are frustrated and confused. So they could change their mind is all I'm trying to say. We're not close to the MacBook Air to know for sure what they're going to do on the next generation, but still I will agree it does make sense that if Apple is going to make these weird and wacky design choices with the 24 inch iMac, why stop there? You know, why not bring that to more models? And in fact, why aren't we getting eight colors of the Mac mini, right? That's supposed to be like this entry level desktop, it's supposed to be cheaper. When can I get a pink Mac mini? These are the questions I want Apple to answer, but that's somewhat of the drawback of having seven or eight different color options is that Apple has to do their best to guess which colors are gonna sell the best. And that means that if they just treat it all even and make, for the sake of the example, let's say a million units of each color, but then everybody starts ordering the blue color and no one's ordering the pink color, then that means the blue option is much more limited and people are kind of forced to buy colors they're not interested in just because they want to get the Mac sooner and they're in a hurry for college or whatever. But hey, there's a huge backlog of blue MacBooks, so that means you gotta wait longer. That's part of the reason that when the iPhone 10 came out, it only came in two colors and two storage configurations. It's because the parts for Face ID were such low in supply. And because of that, they had as little configurations as possible because they wanted all of those spare parts going to one or two models. That way there wasn't gonna be a huge backlog of orders due to all of the various color options that once supply chains have figured out, that's when they diversify a bit more. But right now, especially, it does not feel like there's a bunch of parts in supply because there's a global chip shortage that Apple's expecting to impact them. I hope that if they do introduce more colors, they can work around around the chip shortage and do their best to get their products out to the most amount of people possible. Ultimately, I think this all comes down to the Justin Long ad. I think he is single-handedly the reason Apple is diversifying all the color options. But as long as we get some MacBook Pros with black bezels, I don't care what color they are, and we get some
some Pro Display XDR looking iMac, I'll be fine. I'll complain still, but for the most part, that's the demographic I think I cater to. Ever since I've been buying Apple products, I've always been getting the black bordered option. iPod Touch, I got in black. iPhone 5, I got in black. iPad Air, I got in black. All because of the black bezels, and then the only time I started not getting black was once they started bringing black bezels to the silver option. That's what I got with the 2018 iPad Pro. I was like, hey, I can get a new color and still retain my black bezels, so yeah, I'll mix it up a bit. But now that the white bezels are making their return, I guess I'm going back to black only. So that's the situation we're in now. I'm curious what you guys think of white bezels on a MacBook or a white keyboard coming back. I'm not really for it, but if you are for it, I guess I'm happy for you. Congratulations. This is your Apple Sheep here. I'll see you in the next one.